ME is a seriously debilitating uh, condition which can dominate and even destroy people's lives. Now this is ME Awareness Week and our reporter Helen McInerney has been down here in the Lismore area to meet artist Corina Dine. She was diagnosed with ME some eight years ago but she's been fighting it and overcoming it through her art. In the mid-90s, Dutch-born artist Karina Dine began to make a name for herself as a doll maker. Her dolls caught the public's attention and she made a number of television appearances. But in 1998, just as her doll making business was beginning to take off, Karina was struck down with ME. In June uh, 98, I got a viral infection and ended up in hospital and they thought it was meningitis. I was very, very ill and I just didn't recover from that. And although in the hospital they said after a few days, well, you know, can't find anything, go home. So I presumed that they were right. But yet I couldn't safely cross the road because I couldn't coordinate my movements. You know, nearly got knocked over by a car because I couldn't actually stop. And um, if friends came to visit, I had to lie down because I was too tired to sit up and talk and, you know, just didn't feel quite right. <laughs> but, um, and then months later, I got worse again and I ended up in hospital again, this time on the neurologist in Cork, which was a luckily, lucky in a way, because I got diagnosed in with ME, which there is no diagnosis for ME, but they check out everything else. They check out M our MS. At the time, the doctor thought I might have a brain hemorrhage. So that, that they look at everything else and if they can't find any other reason, then they tell you that have me and then they send you home and saying there's not a whole lot we can do for you so the illness totally changed Karina's life she was in her mid-30s and she went from being an active busy woman to needing full-time care I met Karina about eight years ago and I was initially involved with Karina when she was organising the Lismore Craft Fair and that's where I found this little fella actually and he's had a home with me ever since, one of her doll art pieces and she was a very vibrant person at that stage, extremely active and I had actually known her when she was running around the place. I have this vision of her running into the cathedral in Lismore when she was late for a concert and quite shortly after that then um, she developed ME and uh, then I met her in Dungarvan one day and she was in a wheelchair and that was a real shock to me because she was so active both in her creative life and in her physical life from what I remember of her and um, then really she went into her illness in a very deep way. As the illness began to take its toll, Karina became housebound. The ME also affected her memory. For a while, like I said, I couldn't read or write and but yet there was so much going on in my head that, you know, such a change of life from being active to being, um, to needing full-time care, um, you know, having people cook for me, having people nearly feed me, <laughs> um, needing so much minding. I mean, that, that, you need to figure that one out in your head. And the way I did that was through drawings and art. Um, somehow images appeared of eggs and then I looked up in the, in the dictionary what eggs actually meant and it meant something like developing into, or the possibility of developing into a new individual. And I felt kind of right because I felt that my life had, I just had to start all over again. And slowly the eggs hatched and I had flying lessons and one day I hope to be fit to fly. So that's the whole team that I've chosen. As he watched her struggle with her illness, Karina's friend, artist David Begley, decided to document Karina's attempts to cope through her art. This 15-minute documentary called Fit to Fly is a diary of one woman's battle with ME. Boy, did she have to be creative with the illness. You know, she went on so many journeys in her head and in her mind and stuff when she could not put her feet under her or she could go nowhere. Um, a lot of people in a similar situation, I think they would have been absolutely trapped I'd say she's probably one of the most inspirational people I've ever met. It was difficult to make the piece in some ways because I, I, I was close to her, as, or am close to her as a friend, but I just had to step back 
from from the piece and be objective about what people were saying, you know, in interviews and, and how they might discuss how how difficult difficult the illness was. But really, I was trying to capture the the positive side of the story and how she 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 copes with it, you know. The documentary follows Karina to Ardmore in County Waterford. I think Ardmore has probably been a very very important place to Karina because it was. I don't know, well, you'd have to ask her, but I think it was just somewhere where she could come to, where she could really just be herself. There was never, ever, ever any pressure on her here. It's not known what causes ME, and there's no known cure. David Begley is hoping schools will buy his documentary Fit to Fly in order to educate young people about a very misunderstood illness. This week, Karina's art exhibition opened in Lismore Library in County Waterford. Another important step on her road to recovery. And hopefully that Awareness Week will be some help to all those people suffering from ME out there. Asha, welcome back to Nationwide. Where we're going now is to Lismore in County Waterford to meet an artist that we first featured on Nationwide 14 years ago when she was diagnosed with ME. Her name is Corina Dine and she is now helping others through the therapy of puppet making. Valerie Waters went to Lismore to meet her and also to have a chat with some of the participants on her course. The small birds of Lismore, County Waterford, are regular visitors to the garden owned by artist Corina Dine. Born in Holland, Corina has been living in Ireland since the 1980s. She uses a wheelchair most of the time now as she suffers from ME. The illness totally changed Karina's life. Back in 2004, Nationwide featured Karina during the ME Awareness Week. In the mid-90s, Dutch-born artist Karina Dine began to make a name for herself as a doll maker. Her dolls caught the public's attention and she made a number of television appearances. But in 1998, just as her doll making business was beginning to take off, Karina was struck down with ME. In June uh, 98, I got a viral infection and ended up in hospital and they thought it was meningitis. I was very, very ill and I just didn't recover from that. And Although in the hospital they said after a few days, well, you know, can't find anything, go home. So I presumed that they were right. But yes, I couldn't safely cross the road because I couldn't coordinate my movements. You know, nearly got knocked over by a car because I couldn't actually stop. And um, if friends came to visit, I had to lie down because I was too tired to sit up and talk and, you know, just didn't feel quite right. <laughs> now, 14 years after that nationwide report, we're here at Karina's home today to meet her and some of the people close to her who have learned the practice of healing arts through the making of puppets. Throughout the years, uh, creativity has helped me and in turn others hugely to understand my changed existence. Yeah, I have yeah. started teaching in my own studio, which is just magic because it is those few steps across the yard and I'm in a different world and my studio is now not just a quiet place, it's, it's alive with other people's stories. The women in Corina's home studio have not just learned the skill of making a puppet, but they have benefited on a deeper level, as the process for them has been therapeutic. Well, she started off as a child and then a grumpy old man, and then it, she started to develop to look like my grandmother, my nana who passed away. And that's what took me surpri by surprise with the puppetry, that it's much more, it's not just making a puppet. They develop into characters and have personalities themselves. And you really do have, you develop a real emotional attachment to them. You know, even with the making of her clothes, like this was a scarf belonged to my grandmother and her pants was a hat that my grandmother had made. So it all ties in and it's, a, it's, it's absolutely a wonderful experience. 
Lorraine O'Shaughnessy is an art therapist. She approached Karina and asked if she could learn puppet making from her. Her name is Fragriti. She's developed out of an interest in street art, graffiti, and uh, she's raring to go. I think I'm going to probably live through her creatively. Um, and I think that's the beauty about puppets. You can live through them, that you can speak um, through them. She's full of attitude, all right. <laughs> Just can't wait to get going. In 2014, Karina Dine was the leader of a project with the Irish Wheelchair Association called Life Outside the Box. It was a very enjoyable experience for all the participants. Put your foot up there now, missus. Karina's friend, Anne Van Hemeladonk O'Grady, who is visiting Karina today, was one of the participants in that project. We worked as a group and we had more fun than should have been legal. We laughed until we cried. It's very healing because it helps you to confront yourself, to look at life, to look at what you have been dealt as a hand and talk about it to your compatriots, to others in a similar position. And everybody created their own individual puppet. And funnily enough, each and every one of them had something of their creator in their uh, outward appearance. But they gave us as much as we gave them life. They gave us a lot of uh, self-confidence. They gave us courage to talk about what's wrong and why and what we should be doing about it. It was one of the most educational experiences of my long life. I've got another foot. Anne has multiple sclerosis. She's made a puppet whom she calls Penelope. <laughs> Anne says that Penelope has an attitude to life just her like hers. She, like myself, has decided it's not going to beat her. She is a little bit elderly and infirm and uh, she's rather stiff when she's walking like myself. I suppose she really is a mirror image of me, uh, except she's got red hair and I've got grey. Karina Dine has written several books, as well as making animated short films using her puppets. All of this creativity occurs in 20-minute spurts of energy. Then she has to rest. So all of her work takes quite a long time to produce. Despite her illness, her home is a welcoming hub of creative energy, which flows in both directions. And do you know what I find, ma find magic about your puppets? They're all individuals. You feel happy the minute you come in the front door. There's just a warmth and a hug. You get a hug when you come in. She helped us all. And she said we helped her. An interesting story there of community and support in County Waterford. It's a Skahela, a Warren Adina. Agas Leshin Thomas Taga Eg Der on Floor, Tos Sulagum, Gorvinchiv Tanivas. Agas Gadi on Kate Orella, Iwakwiv, Agas Gadeshiv Slan.